Hey, welcome to my channel. So if you've been here for a while, you know that I like to build things and sometimes I get myself into some really interesting projects. So a couple months ago, I woke up and I had this really long email from this guy on the internet and I usually don't respond to weirdos on the internet. But in this case, I kind of thought, well, this sounds kind of interesting. So Tom, come on in here. So this is the weirdo I'm talking about. Internet weirdo, <laughs> right here. <laughs> so he proposed this idea of making a teardrop after he saw my teardrop video um, that he could pull with his vintage Vespa. <laughs> Clearly, he's got a few screws, but. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Obviously. Obviously. Anyway, so finally, after chatting for a while, I said, you know, why don't you come on over to my shop and let's just talk about this. And I kind of said, I, I think if this is going to have any chance of working, it's going to have to be made out of foam, right? Yeah, so I, originally I wanted to do it out of wood. I was like, no foam. And then when we talked about it, we looked at the weight, it was foam. Yeah. It, it made the most sense. Yeah, and so neither of us were super excited about trying to build something out of foam. Right. You know, I'm a woodworker. I'm a metal guy. Yeah. So, so we're not too jazzed about exactly. foam. Exactly, yeah. But it actually was really interesting and we learned a lot along the way. So I'm gonna have a whole series of different build videos. If there's anything in particular that you want more information on, leave a comment, but let's take you through a little tour of this. All right, so first, as we already mentioned, this is made out of foam. So all of this is just foam, but we covered it with poor man's fiberglass and I'll do a detailed video on that. But that gave it a lot of uh, stability and it really feels like an extremely solid unit which I was very nervous about making it out of foam. Yeah, so this is only an inch thick extruded foam. So um, I don't know about you, but I was I was pretty nervous about that. Because totally. when, yeah, when we were moving around parts, it was very soggy and floppy like a wet yes. noodle. And it was, uh, yeah. Yeah, and I'll show you more details on that because there's a few things even with that foam that I would have done differently, but it totally worked out. So, all right. So I was also very nervous about making a door when it was going to be made out of foam. So we did end up putting aluminum around it and it did make for a nice door. Uh, the windows are acrylic and uh, uh, luckily Tom had a buddy that was able to cut those for us with a laser. All right, so let's take you to the inside. All right, so some things on the inside. First of all, in order to make this curve right, I didn't like the look that sometimes when people make the foam bend the curves are so far apart that you can clearly see it looks notched. So we did every single inch, which actually makes for a pretty cool look on the inside. And then Tom, I guess, really did want a playhouse when he was a child and maybe he didn't get one, I'm not sure, but <laughs> he wanted a whole little kitchenette. So we made a whole little kitchenette. So he's got lots of storage and, and fun stuff in here that he can play house with. <laughs> <laughs> And then in truly over-engineering things, um, to, in order to get this door to be able to close right, we were going to have to build into the door space, so I was a little concerned with how that was going to look. So I spent quite a bit of effort making one single piece of wood, <laughs> but anyway, hopefully you can see the eye roam and foam there and a couple hooks for his keys. So, so yeah, so the inside is pretty, pretty cool. All right, so I'm actually a normal sized person. I just look like a giant next to Tom. <laughs> so. Five foot four. <laughs> so this is actually a really perfect size for him. So go ahead and lay down, Tom. See, sure, yeah. you can see that you've got some yep. serious space. All right, so Tom, how is it sleeping in there? Yeah, it was actually really good. You know, I was talking to my sister and she said, oh, it must feel like a coffin or something in there, but it's really not. You've got a, you've got a ton of headroom. I can actually sit up in here. Uh, almost two of me could fit in here width wise. So I slept in here last night and it was super comfortable. It was warm. It was cozy. Very, very comfortable. It was super enjoyable. Awesome. So let's show them the part that confirmed that you are in fact a weirdo from the internet yes so i i know she's gonna go right to the stable <laughs> watch watch this everyone she's gonna go right to the stable all right so <laughs> we're talking about the design we're designing the inside and um and we're talking about building these shelves and i'm like great you're gonna have this storage and that storage and i had this all mapped out and then this guy turns to me and says i'm like oh no 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 those, those are for the horses. So, so I bought, I bought these, you know, I love the mid-century modern aesthetic, 
uh, especially late 40s, early 50s. And uh, so I got these, I got the horses, and I'm like, oh no, that's not for camping gear. No, 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 no. The shelves <laughs> are for the horses because I need that mid-century modern aesthetic. So I'm clearly all about function, and I kept saying, Tom, if this falls apart, it's not going to be pretty. And he clearly wanted it to just be pretty. Don't care if it works, <laughs> just has to look beautiful. Uh, so we did a lot of compromising. And, um, and, and I think I won in most cases, so he, he did get his horses. I did get the horses. And they do light up. Yes. It's still plugged in, right? It is still plugged in. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it in the daylight. Yeah, you really can't see it. Yeah, right now. I was going to say, but But we'll put some pictures up. Yeah. So the the stables light up. But so we compromised and I won because we did gain a ton of storage because not only yes. do these go deep, but by bringing the horse shelves up nice and um nice and thin, he has tons of storage back behind and then he won't be able to see his stuff. So yep. it'll be pretty. Yeah. So aesthetically everything can be hidden. You kind of tuck everything away and then you can kind of pull these to the middle. Um, so you get the aesthetic uh, on a serious note, you get the aesthetic of the horses and this whole beautiful aesthetic here, but, but you pick up a ton of, uh, of storage space, usable storage space. Yes. Okay. All right. So building the hatch was another unique, challenge with trying to make it out of foam so uh, we go ahead and put this up here all right so we tried to just keep it super simple on all of this stuff because the hatch weighs all of five pounds so it didn't need a lot um, but yeah so we just still went with the curves through uh, the foam so this is this is foam I have foam on both sides because the foam fusion that we used worked really great at kind of welding foam together. And then 3 8 inch birch as a few spars for this to give it its shape and stability. 8 inch birch around the outside. So, you know, we'll give a little bit more details on that. Yep. So, what do you have to say about yeah. the hatch? So, the, so, one of the things that I, that I wanted was a, a functional galley where, that you could actually, actually cook in. So, uh, we came up with... Uh, this is just floor tile uh, for the top, and we actually use the foam fusion to uh, glue it to um, a foam base. It works really good. It's super solid, um, very, very functional, and I tried cooking in it last night. Everything was amazing. We made lasagna, made some coffee this morning, and it, it's actually a truly functional galley. Uh, Lucy, you want to talk about our little extra sure. storage? So Lucy had an idea where we could pick up extra storage. So Yeah, so this because of the shape of this, you needed this offset for the hatch. We just had this really awkward gap. So we were able to build a wooden box that actually stores all of the silverware. Even his plates can fit in here, napkins, um, everything. So this was just totally an added bonus. Um, and I'll you know put some nice pictures of that in here and then with this cover here it just totally disappears you don't even notice it anymore so yeah and it, it's super amazing because you know without any cabinetry without cupboards um, there there was a concern where you're just not going to have space for anything so when when Lucy saw that gap there she's like hey let's make that storage so it ended up working out perfect you know plates cups uh, cooking utensils, everything goes in these little slotted compartments. Uh, the, the lid goes on and it disappears. So beautiful work so, there, Lucy. That was perfect. It looks good it, and it's functional. It looks good and it's functional. <laughs> All, yeah. All right. So Tom, you want to tell them a little bit about how this shape came to be? Sure. So this is a 1947 uh, cabin car replica of sorts. Uh, we shrunk the shape down about three-quarter scale. So these were made uh, right after the war, uh, 1947. They were gearing up the factories for post-war production. So fleet manufacturing out of Canada, they came up with this cabin car uh, made completely out of wood. Um, our version obviously foam, the wood, the, the grid itself is made out of wood, but this is about a three-quarter scale shrunken down cabin car. Yeah, awesome. And what is the frame for this? Yeah, so the frame is all aluminum. My friend uh, Jesse Fontes, master welder, went over to his house for a few weekends. We welded up the frame. He designed it, laid it out. We got it all welded up. Uh, 26 pounds. Yeah, for that's the, amazing. For the whole, amazing, 26 pounds on that amazing. frame. And it's a really nice base. 
Um, we were able to add electrical in the easiest way possible. I'll put a link in the description to this, but it's literally, you drill a hole, pop it in, you're good to go. So now, yeah, with that, I have two receptacles on the inside. So you drill the hole, slide it in, two receptacles. Yep. And it's awesome. We got a vent, vent up top, and um, yeah, so it's pretty, pretty awesome. Okay, so a, a little bit about the bike. This is a 1962 Vespa VBB. It's a 150 cc bike. It's a two-stroke, so I have to mix the gas and oil and uh, dump it in the gas tank. Um, it is a four-speed manual transmission, so the, the bike actually shifts up on the handlebar, so you grab the shifter and then the entire assembly rotates to shift the bike. And when you first do this, it, it feels a little bit wonky, but uh, with a little bit of practice, I actually prefer this now to, to foot shifters. Um, the bike, I think, is around, and all the Vespa people out there would know it maybe a little better than me, but I think the bike puts out only four and a half horsepower or so. So not a super powerful bike for a 150, but the fact that it's a two-stroke and it's a manual transmission, that, that'll actually help when it comes time to tow. Uh, the color of the bike, you guys can see that we matched, we did a paint match on here. This is Max Meyer Blue 210. Uh, typically not a blue guy, but I love, I love, love, love this color. So we, we emulated that um, on the trailer. So uh, the only thing, I'm a little nervous because this has dual drum brakes. You know, with the age of the bike, it's not disc drum. So it's just dual drum. So again, when it comes time to stop this, uh, well, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna see what happens. Um, but yeah, so that, that's the bike. All right, so if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and follow along with the rest of this build and then stick with me to see what other messes I get myself into. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, have an awesome day. All right.